The New Tech Times, a video magazine for the electronic age. In this edition, Sports Cable. Will big money for teams mean big headaches for fans? Also, video graphics. The film industry puts computers to work. Later, a commentary by columnist Lindsay Van Gilder and a guide to video cassette recorders. We'll show you what to look for. All in this edition of the New Tech Times. I'm Nicholas Johnson. A great many Americans look upon computers and the new technology as the enemy. It's something scientific and cold and inhuman. But the fact is that computers and electronics technology are now merging with art, and neither will ever be quite the same again. The revolution is taking place in recording studios and artist lofts and, and on TV programs. Whatever you may think of television, Programming in the past has usually been little more than motion pictures of radio programs. Oh, there have been a few exceptions, I suppose. ABC Sports did some innovative things. Uh, there have been a few video artists. But mostly television has remained undeveloped as an art form. Now all that's changing. You know that uh, opening animation that we use on this program? Did you ever wonder how it was put together? Well, so did I. And we're both about to find out. And remember, that with the continuing drop in prices, what industry is using today will soon be available to the rest of us. Here's our report, produced by Barry Stoner. These are illustrations by Paul Zander. They could have been created by paint and brush on canvas, but they were not. They are electronically generated images. They were produced at the New York Institute of Technology with a digital pen, an electronic tablet, and a computerized palette. Here's how it's done. Some of the basics of the uh, machine is the fact that the pin has an antenna and a microswitch. And the electronic tablet is filled with wires, horizontal and vertical. The uh, pin, when you get the antenna close to the tablet, uh, you get a cursor on the upper screen. So that shows you where you're at. And that terminal holds the uh, menu, so you think of the terms as buttons, because every time I press down on the pen, something happens. And the lower monitor carries the picture. Now, to select colors, all I have to do is take the cursor, touch the color I want to use, and the palette disappears so I can work under here if I want to. But now the color's in the, in the pen, and you simply draw with it just like any other pen. And when I want the palette to come back, I move the cursor off the bottom of the screen and then pick another color. And also I have a fill button. Now this allows you to pick up colors from the screen and fill areas solid or enclosed. Now of course this is much faster than paint. And say I want to look at some more color schemes, all I have to do now is to go in and ask the computer for some ideas. And so automatically I'm going to come up with 255 more color schemes. Sandra and others are using new technology to create visual art. A traditional animation process could have been used to create the opening sequence for the New Tech Times, but it was not. This animation was produced with the help of a computer. One drawing is recorded at the beginning of the action. Then at the end of the action, another drawing is entered. The computer fills in all the drawings in between the beginning and the end of the action. The artist can even control the speed of the action at the touch of a button. Another time-consuming process in traditional animation is the painting of each cell. With a computer, it's as simple as touching the electronic pen to the tablet. The look of traditional animation can be preserved, even though, as in this case, it's generated electronically. In the future, the illusion of three-dimensional animated worlds may be commonplace, as computers bring new possibilities to the electronic artist. But when it comes to creating strange new worlds through visual illusion, few can compete with the success of John Dykstra and his team of visual magicians at Apogee Studios in Los Angeles. They created the special effects for the first Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, 
the first Superman movie, and many other films and commercials. We use all manner of high technology, and it's really fun. I mean, for most people to come into contact with as much technology as we come into contact with on a daily basis, they would have to run 20 different companies. And so this, this is excitement, and it's got a little magic in it. And it's got little movies in it, and I love recording images, and most of these people love recording images, so I don't know. It's, a, it's kind of a super garage with a way to maintain itself. To create these illusions, a computer is used to control the movement of the camera so precisely that multiple images can be combined to create satellites rushing through space or a computer's eye view of its operator. Although Dykstra's special effects have been spectacular, he puts them in perspective. Effects always are an element of storytelling. That's all they are. So, I mean, the magic, the illusion isn't there to stand alone. It isn't to impress people with what magic tricks you can do. It's to tell a story. And when it comes to the role of new computer technology in the creative process, John Dykstra may speak for many visual artists. You can give somebody the most sophisticated device in the world, uh, the capabilities of which are enormous. A computer is a perfect example of that. And uh, some people will make, uh, you know, great things out of it. And other people will try to duplicate things they've seen done in other mediums. And other people will take that device and make, you know, they'll make doilies that are terrible doilies. I mean, a good doily would be good, but a terrible doily is, you know. So I, I think it's a tool. It's like anything else. In these new tech times, the artist, the animator, and the movie maker will find the computer a useful tool, but it will never replace the magic of the creative process. Not only is the new technology affecting what others are producing for us, it's also affecting what you and I can do with that entertainment in our homes. For years, expensive TV sets came with little 98-cent speakers. Soon, we'll actually be able to hear our TV shows, and in stereo. Large TV screens and better sound will make those offensive commercials even bigger and louder in our living rooms.